Hello and welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm Ramzan Karamali. Today we're looking at European supermarkets and my guest is Russ Mould, Investment Director at AJ Bell. Last week, the UK's biggest supermarket chain, Tesco, said grocery inflation had lessened substantially. It also revealed its highest pre-tax annual profit in more than a decade, as it said it was seeing an improvement in consumer sentiment. Tesco is rewarding shareholders with a £1 million buyback of its own shares. However, its share price this year is down. And in fact, across Europe, the stock performance of some of the biggest players in the sector has been nothing to shout about. Well, joining me now for his analysis on the sector is AJ Bell's Russ Mould. Russ, thanks so much for Pleasure, joining AJ. us. Um, on the face of it, the performance of these shares hasn't been anything to write home about. Why? Why has it been so poor? I mean, to give Tesco's and Sainsbury's from the UK perspective a bit of credit, they have just come off from a five-year high, and that was in itself partly a reflection of food price inflation giving their margins a little bit more comfort as they're still locked in this battle with Aldi, Lidl and the discounters, and they're facing their own input cost inflation, not just from food, but wages, utility bills, so it gave them a little bit more room with which to manoeuvre there. The margins haven't gone up an awful lot, and I think markets are now looking at, well, if food price is easing, and the British Retail Consortium said it's its lowest level since April 2022 at three and a half, four, four percent. And their costs are still going up, minimum wage, national living wage, utility bills. Will that start to put a bit of a slowdown on margin? Tesco's is pushing back on that, talking about a bit of an improvement going forward, helped by its discounting. But it, it is a very, very tough market out there for them still. Well, Tesco you know, just announced its best performance in a decade. How are they managing to do that? And they are growing market share as well despite of the discounters. Yeah, they've kept market share. You've been gained it a little bit on the Kantar numbers. It's been Morrisons and Asda who've been really struggling at the hands of the Aldis and the Lidls of this world. I think their own loyalty schemes, discount schemes, club card schemes have been a big advantage for them, or certainly in terms of keeping some of those um, barbarians at the gate, as it were. And Tesco's pretty bullish about inflation and about consumer sentiment as well. Why? Um, the UK GFK Consumer Sentiment Survey, that has shown some improvement. I think, again, we're seeing a, the, the energy price cap come down. That's cutting consumers a little bit of slack on their bills. Wage growth is still running at 5.5%, well ahead now of the official inflation numbers. So, again, you can see a reason why the British consumer might start to feel a little bit better about life, providing inflation stays in its box. And I think that's what we're waiting for in the second half of the year to see whether we get that second wave coming through. Well, looking at mainland Europe now, France's Carrefour, uh, Belgium and Netherlands, Ahol de Hayes and Jeronimo Martins from Portugal and Poland. Performance there has not been great, has no, it? No, oddly, all of their shares nearly down sort of 10 to 15 percent over the last year. The one outlier is Coleroy to Belgium that's up nearly 60 percent, and that's really because it's made some disposals. So it's paid down debt, less debt means less risk, less risk can mean a higher share price. And it's been gobbling up market share from Arhold Delhaize while that's been refurbishing its Belgian store. So that's partly why Arhold is down, and it's certainly a big explanation of why Colwright is up. And with something like Geronimo Martins, it's made quite a decent stick of things in, in places outside of Europe, hasn't it? And yeah. that's why it has been performing quite well. The, the results were pretty positive. Uh, and Poland, the share price doesn't reflect that. No, they're, I mean, Poland and Colombia have been great for them, and that's a big driver of their top-line growth. Again, similar story, you could say, to the British or the French or the, Bel or the Belgian, the low countries. It's price... I mean, Gerard and Martins, actually, they thought that price inflation might be negative this year, and, again, they've still got costs going up. So it's a similar dynamic of prices versus costs with competition thrown in there for good measure, and the outlook statement wasn't particularly optimistic. So we've not been very positive about the performance so far this year on these supermarkets. But overall, would you tell investors to look at the supermarket sector? I mean, it depends what you're looking for. I mean, we all need to eat, drink, keep our houses clean. So if you're looking for a consumer staples play where there's guaranteed demand, they're a good place to look. You're probably looking at those with the bigger market shares, maybe like Tesco, for example. And if you think that there's an unexpected economic slowdown coming, they'd be a perfect place to be. If you think that the world's coming, maybe turning a corner, as the British finance minister likes to say, they might get left behind by a few cyclicals. It depends to a degree on your economic outlook. Russ Small from AJ Bell. Many thanks for your thoughts. Pleasure. And that is your roundup of European supermarkets. I'm Ramzan Karmali, and this is Reuters.